Over the years, Colorado & Company has introduced you to some pretty amazing women. And since March is Women's History Month, Dr. Colorado is honored to introduce you today to Colorado's most famous school teacher, Emily Griffith. So welcome to the show, Dr. Colorado. Great to be here. Happy to have you here. So let's talk about Emily Griffith's background. We're all familiar with her name here in Colorado, but you're going to teach us a little bit more about her today. Right, well, she was a tiny little woman, shorter yeah. than a lot of her students, yeah. but made a huge difference in their lives. I bet she did. Let's talk about her background. What made her such an inspirational figure? She was from a little town in Nebraska, as I recall. Came here and got into teaching in the Denver Public Schools, but uh, worried about her students, that they come to school hungry, they mm -hmm. come to school underclothed. And then she also found out their parents were often struggling, didn't know language, didn't have a job. So she would open opportunity school for all who wish to learn, including not only the students, but their adults, their parents. So she was one of those teachers that really cared, truly cared about the students and then the ripple effect of their families as they went home. And it really comes out because the Emily Griffith Opportunity School is still in place today, still working, still helping kids and families out. So what, back, what kind of opportunities did it offer in its early years? It's been open ever since 1916. Mm -hmm. It would offer uh, English language skills where you could speak and write English and then job skills, training you for where you could get a job in any occupation you could think of. You could learn to be a barber or a bartender right. or an auto mechanic, an airplane mechanic. Wow, so she really covered it all. She yep. was also a big proponent for immigrants and back then immigrants weren't welcome to participate in all forms of schooling but Emily Griffith decided that everyone should be given a chance to learn English and learn those job schools so how did she handle that attitude towards immigrants? Right, I think she basically ignored it rather than send them back, keep them out Let's teach them the English, wow. let's teach them job skills, let's make them helpful American citizens. Wow. And we're going to take a look at a photo here because not everybody was in agreement with Emily Griffith, obviously. Tell us what's happening here in this photo. This is the KKK marching down Larimer Street, downtown Denver in the 1920s, when the Klan briefly ruled Colorado, elected the mayor of Denver, the governor of the state, the U.S. senator. It was kind of a brief nightmare in the 1920s, but of course their idea of what to do immigrants was to... <laughs> wow, and so Emily actually stood up to these people who were marching down right. the streets of Denver. an alternative view than from what the Klan had. Oh my goodness, and what was the reaction? Do you know what the, can you tell us more about what the climate was like when she was standing up to these groups? I think a lot of people supported her and agreed with her and mm -hmm. thought she was doing wonderful work. Uh, she got great press and uh, everyone supported this school which was free for all who wished to learn. Wow. It's just like they say, well-behaved women rarely make history, right? <laughs> right and she yeah. clearly yeah. made history yeah. because her school is still in operation today. So who attends the Emily Griffith Opportunity School in 2020? Well, when I visited there, one of the saddest things was all these refugees who were persecuted in, in countries all around the world. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been tortured, all kinds of dreadful th stories to happen to them. Here they come with a chance for a brand new life. Wow, and now it's a thriving school. There's murals painted all over the building. It's just a beautiful place. So we're certainly hoping that it continues for a long time to come. Now back to Emily and her personal style. She has been known for always being spotted in these big, beautiful hats. So what can you tell us about yeah, her and her style? There's a great example on the screen right yeah, there. Yeah, look at that. One of the things she taught girls was millinery skills, where they would make hats back when, hat, when everybody had hats. Right. And you could, any hat on her head, you could buy. Oh. She was bottling them and they were for sale. I think they'd even have a little price tag on it. Oh, so if you cute. fell in love with this particular hat, it could be yours. What a smart woman. She yeah. was just in walki a walking advertisement. <laughs> right. That is neat. So if you had to sum it up for folks, what is Emily's lasting legacy here in Colorado and why is she such an inspirational woman? I think how to approach poverty, how to yeah. approach immigrants, how to pe teach, approach the uh, underclass. Right. And she would do everything for them. Found some of them coming to school hungry, so she'd make a big pot of soup have that right by the door to feed people on the idea that you don't learn well if you're starving. Right, well she had that right. Well Dr. Colorado, thank you so much for teaching us a little bit more about Emily Griffith. For Dr. Colorado's upcoming tours, talks, books, and classes, please check out dr-colorado.com. And if you're interested in or need a few or need a new opportunity, you can visit the Emily Griffith Technical College at emilygriffith.edu to learn more.